everybody. All right, Zane from Really Easy AI and my slide decks are hosed. There we go. Um, welcome back. We are at part two of how to really use Google Notebook LM update. And here's what we're going to learn. So we already did the first three things. What is a notebook? Uh, what is Notebook LM? Getting Notebook LM and understanding notebooks at a high level. Uh, now we're going to dig into the details. Using the notebook guide, creating audio overviews and podcasts, the big game changer. Adding notes, asking questions, working with answers, sharing notebooks and use cases. I hope we'll get through all of it, but if not, we'll do a part three. Now, before we do any of that, and I get into using the notebook guide, I realized I didn't show you my secret technique for websites that uh, it won't let you have. So real quick, we're going to head on back to our notebook. And uh, first, we're going to just do a search. It doesn't really matter what we search for here. Um, let's just do a search on AI News. Just kind of make it easy here. That's what's got meta on it. I'm not sure why. There we go. All right. So I'm just going to look for AI News and find a traditional website. Uh, let's see here. Uh, artificial Intelligence could help with no, that's, no. Rolling Stone again. Let's take Rolling Stone here. Uh, I bet Rolling Stone has it. So I'm going to take Rolling Stone here doesn't matter what it's about and then I'm gonna come back into my notebook and try to add it as a web source right as a website source now what's most likely gonna happen is as I try to add it there you go you see it fails so if I click on information unable to import this web page due to source restrictions okay not a problem I remove it but then I turn right around and if I go to archive is put in this website. Hopefully it's already been stored. Yep, archived 21 hours ago, right? Got all the text that we want. Take that, come into Liquid AI, add source, website, boom, give it the archive link. No problem whatsoever. So archive is gonna start becoming your best friend if you wanna link off to web content. It's a whole lot easier than copying and pasting or anything else. I tend to use archive quite a lot these days for a variety of purposes. So keep that in mind. Um, there you go, it's been added. It's in here somewhere. Uh, I actually need to remove it. Uh, where'd, it where'd it go? Oh, here we go, AI generated girl, blah, blah, blah. So I'm gonna remove that because I don't want it to pollute our uh, stuff. Also, I'm gonna remove this uh, uh, wave file that we have here because it also is not related to uh, Liquid AI. So <clears throat> again, it's why, it's why I told you, always make sure your notebooks are kind of around a theme so that you can keep related items together. That's where it becomes really powerful. Put a, putting a whole bunch of unrelated stuff together really doesn't take advantage uh, of what uh, this thing can do for you. Okay, moving on. By the way, to get back to the main notebook page, you, at any given time, just up in the upper left, click where it says Notebook LM, and it'll take you back to your main notebook page. That should show you your current notebook. Uh, I know you're gonna wonder right away if you can change the icon. Sadly, you cannot. Uh, it is determined for you. Uh, and then uh, give you some example notebooks. The reason I don't like the example notebooks is you can't do stuff with them. They're public notebooks, and you can't really do stuff with them. Um, so this was back in the day when we could share public notebooks. They made these public. Uh, you can't really do that anymore uh, in a meaningful way. So that kind of blows. But but you're really restricted in what you can do with these. So I don't really lead with these. They're great for just asking questions, especially this one, Introduction to Notebook LM. But, um, you know, that's why you're here, right? That's why you're watching the video. So let's move on. So let's talk about using the notebook guide. This is a huge, huge deal. When you first create a notebook, uh, you're gonna be presented with a notebook guide. And the notebook guide's gonna give you a lot of options. It's gonna give you a ton of options. Uh, and we're gonna look at all the things that it can do for us, right? So for example, it's gonna, uh, uh, in the help me create section, it's gonna ask us if we want a FAQ, maybe a study guide, table of contents, timeline, very interesting, and a briefing documentation or briefing doc. It's gonna give us a summary of everything that's in the notebook that is selected. Um, uh, and let's see what else. It's gonna allow us to create the awesome audio overviews. We'll get to that a little later. And it's even gonna have some suggested questions to get you started in case you're like, well, what do I ask? Well, it's got some suggested questions 
for you. So it is pretty, pretty awesome. Let's go ahead and do that first. So uh, at this point, you should have your Liquid AI notebook. Go ahead and jump into it. Now, uh, right away, you're going to see, uh, if you're looking at it, I'm going to have to make room here. If you're looking at it, you're, you don't see the notebook guide, right? It, it's hidden uh, so that you can ask questions. But all you have to do is click on notebook guide and uh, it will show the notebook guide. Now, in my case, it is unfortunately going to be a little big for this resolution. So I have to do this with it. Okay. All right. So you'll see your notebook guide. You can click on notebook guide again in the lower right. It collapses. See there, it zooms in, zooms out. No problem. Now, um, these things, I love these things. Once you've got all your sources in place, if you intend to use all those sources, and actually we don't intend to use all our sources, do we? Uh, the, uh, the Google Doc didn't really have anything, and nor did the Google Slides. So I'm going to remove those sources because they're just going to pollute our answers, and I, I really don't care to have that happen. I think the pasted text was okay, was it not? Uh, yeah, it, it was relevant. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so uh, all the sources now deal with the subject matter at hand. I'm happy with that. So now I think I can go ahead and do an FAQ. So when you click on FAQ, it starts generating an FAQ. Now, the only thing that really annoys me is it just calls it new note instead of giving it the title that it should. Um, but it happens pretty quick. And if you just click on the note, it creates a note, by the way. Just click on the note and then just give it a new name. We'll call this FAQ. Makes sense. Uh, when you're done, just click away and you're good to go. FAQ, Liquid AI FAQ. So it creates an FAQ for you. This is a special kind of note known as a saved response because it literally asked it a question and this is the answer to that question. Let's go back. Let's go ahead and do a quick study guide. And again, same deal. It's going to create a study guide for us real quick. Um, that will help us if we're trying to study for something or get up to speed on something. I use this quite a bit when I'm trying to get up to speed on uh, new topics I'm not as familiar with. I love the study guides. And while that happens, by the way, you can do these in parallel. You can click on table of contents, timeline, and briefing doc. So they're all spinning now. And then you can just go back and rename them. You don't have to wait for one to finish. So here we've got the study guide. Again, just rename it study guide. Here I've got another new note, timeline, and another new note, briefing doc. So we'll do briefing doc. There's my briefing doc. And then let's see, where was my, here it is, timeline. Whoops. And then I've got my, uh, uh, well, it's my deep dive, I think. Hang on, let me, let me double check. Let me do my timeline real quick. And it, you may want to go ahead and just knock these out all at once. What was that last one? That should have been the, uh, that should have been the table of contents. Where is that guy hiding at? Here we go. Yeah, this, uh, this is our table of contents here. That's what this is. Okay, so we're going to call this table of contents. There you go. All right, now we've got them all sorted out. So you can see it's, I've got a table of contents, a timeline um, based on, uh, all of this is based on all the sources that we have in our, uh, uh, in our notebook. Now, interestingly enough, uh, if you wanna create notes or uh, FAQs or any of these based on a limited number of sources, you are not required to choose all the sources. Let's say here I've got eight sources. Now, how do I know I have eight sources? Well, let me show you real quick. Let me uh, resize this. Okay. Well, if you look at the bottom of your screen, it will show you how many sources you're using. In this case, eight, because that's all I have is eight. Uh, but you are not required to use all eight when you're asking questions or doing other things. So if you want to, you can deselect some sources that maybe aren't as relevant or you don't feel like really um, add value. And then you can re-ask your questions or redo whatever it is you want to do. And it will only do it from the sources that you have selected. So if you want to get refined with it, you can do that um, and then ask your questions or do whatever you want to do. So that gets really interesting. <coughs> to come back and select all sources, of course, you could click the button. And if you want to deselect them all, you can do that as well. Very, very cool. All right. 
Now, uh, I believe that was it for that. We did, uh, oh yeah, suggested questions. Completely forgot. So um, in the notebook guide, of course, it will have suggested questions to kind of get you going. Although in this case, I think I'm a victim of, yeah, it's just not doing it for me right now. Um, but normally we'll have suggested questions. It just doesn't have them for me here, probably because of my resolution. Actually, it doesn't look like it's because of my resolution. It looks like something else may be going on. Normally it has suggested questions, but in this case it does not. Uh, but a lot of times it'll have suggested. Probably, I, I think it may have to do with the fact that if you've asked questions already or not, uh, I, I believe it shows suggested questions to get you started, but it may get rid of them uh, afterwards. I'm not quite sure. But regardless, uh, you usually will have suggested questions in there. And certainly within any topic, you have suggested topics that you can drill down on. So really, uh, sorry, with, with any source. So it really doesn't matter that much. Uh, but there you go. All right, moving on. Whoops, I got to get my slide deck going here again. Okay, uh, let's see. Citations. Yeah, let's talk about that for a minute. Uh, whenever you're dealing with output from these things, uh, you often get citations. And that's... Uh, should be from a suggested question, but uh, there we go. Um, so, for example, I believe these don't have it. These uh, uh, do not come with it, but we can ask a question. Later on, we'll dig into the details of it. But if I ask a question like, what is liquid uh, AI? It's going to churn, and then it's going to give me an answer with citations that I can then uh, go back and look at. And there it is. So it's, it's churned on it here. It actually answers some questions. Discuss liquid neural networks. This is one we'd already done before, actually. I guess I can use that one. But you can see here it's already saved the other one, too. Uh, let me see here. There it is. What is liquid AI? What is liquid AI? So there's the question, and here's our citations. And if you put your mouse over any of these, it will show you the um, text that it got the information from and interestingly enough if you click on any of these it will actually take you to the source and highlight the exact words that it got its information from that is super interesting now we're going to dig deeper later on but i just want to bring that up right now because i think that's kind of a cool thing for you to know about all right now um what else i believe that's it for now i think we're in good shape let me uh let me go ahead and get my stuff sorted out here. Give me just a second. Okay, um, so that is it for that. So uh, we've already done the demo using Notebook Guide features. Lots of good stuff. The only thing we haven't done is the audio overview, but that's coming up right now. So let's jump into it. Creating audio overviews and podcasts. This is the game changer. This is probably the reason you came here in the first place. This is epic. Let's discuss. So um, Notebook LM will literally take your sources and generate a podcast type thing. And it is incredible when you hear it for the first time. Um, it'll generate a podcast between a man and a woman discussing your stuff. And it is amazing uh, what it does. So... Um, uh, let's just go ahead and do it, uh, and then I'll show you how to share it. So here we are in your notebook guide. The only thing we didn't talk about, and in my case, I want to do it with all my stuff, so I want to make sure all my sources are selected. They are, okay? You see here where it says audio overview. It's got a little information icon. It even digs into it. Audio overviews are lively, deep dive discussions that summarize the key topics in your sources. This is an experimental feature. Here are some notes. Uh, the, the voices are AI generated. Uh, audio overviews uh, are not comprehensive. Audio reviews are only in English. It could take several minutes to generate. Yes, it always does. Uh, there's a little more here. You need to edit access to notebook in order to generate, or you need edit access in order to generate these, and you can share your feedback as well. All right, great. Well, let's go ahead and do it. So here it says deep dive conversation, two hosts, English only. Click on generate. And right now it's 3.30 p.m. my time. I'm going to pause until it's done give you a sense of how long it takes to generate it.
All right, it is done. Uh, it is now 3.34 p.m. So it took about four minutes to generate this lovely eight-minute podcast. And I'm going to play a little bit of it because you really can't appreciate it until you actually hear what this thing's doing. So here we go. Give me a second. And away we go. So Liquid AI, um, when I first saw that, I have to admit, I thought, okay, another day, another AI company claiming they're going to change the world. Yeah, it's hard to keep up, right? Yeah. It seems like everyone and their dog has an AI startup these days. Seriously. But then, you know, I start going through the research he sent over, and this isn't just some fly-by-night operation. These guys come from MIT, like actual scientists, and their whole approach is different. What struck me right away was that they're deliberately not doing the whole GPT thing that everyone else is obsessed with. Yeah. You're like, forget GPT, we're building our own foundation. And it's not like they just, you know, came up with this last week. These are four scientists from, like you said, MIT's Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Lab that's uh, not messing around, right? They spun off from MIT late last year, so they're still pretty new as a company, but they've already got funding from some big names. OSS Capital, even Pagliuca's family office. So that's... That's a mix, right? Yeah. Like you got hardcore tech investors and the big money folks. Says something... Okay. Let's just take a minute and let that sink in. That's insane. I don't care where you're from. That's insane. And it is awesome. You can see why it's gone viral. If you've never heard it before, it just blows your mind. And... Um, Man, they sound so realistic. Uh, and and as people have been doing crazy stuff with it because uh, this is all AI generated, by the way. But the AI is meant to believe it's human. And somebody did a deal where uh, they had them do a, a podcast on, you know, they're ending their, they've been doing it for 30 years. They're ending it only to find out they're not really human. And these two went crazy going, oh, my God, I'm not a human. I tried to call my wife. It was just some of the funniest stuff. Uh, so very, very cool stuff. But trust me, this is the game changer. Because oftentimes, uh, in addition to being able to do all the great other things you can do with Notebook LM, the ability to create this podcast, then load it up and listen to it, you know, whatever you're doing. I often load them up and I'll listen to them while working on other stuff is just insane uh so yeah i cannot possibly uh you know undersell this thing this thing's nutty good and of course you can always give feedback here with thumbs up or thumbs down but more importantly you can share this there's a share button here the little square with the up arrow click on that and you can decide whether or not to give public access to this thing um and then anyone with a link you can copy the link and share it with anyone you want so very, very cool stuff. Do bear in mind that if you do share it, it, it is publicly available, even though people without the link usually won't find it, but it is out there. So please don't, you know, and, and it generally won't. I think it scrubs personally identifiable information. Of course, anything that might not be safe for work, you know, SFW stuff and all that. So you should be reasonably okay, but just be careful, okay? Um, these things are just awesome. I love these things. All right, uh, so that is it for that. Uh, super duper awesome stuff, and we did go into sharing as well. Uh, give me a second, I'll get my slides reorganized. Unfortunately, I'm just a victim of the resolution there. All right, there we go. Talked about sharing. Uh, oh, this would be a great time to remind you to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, if you really like the content, uh, help support the channel. Any little bit will uh, help us. If you really, really like the content, consider becoming a member. I, I really need that Bugatti. Um, there's a couple of levels of membership. Artificial Narrow Intelligence, level one, $1.99 a month. You get loyalty badges, emojis, discounted merchandise. Uh, Artificial General Intelligence, level two, $4.99 a month. A bunch of stuff I tend to not do or do a lot of, like I answer every comment. So the priority reply to comments not a big deal. Main reason they join... My level two people is to get early access to my videos. I'll queue these up way in advance. And uh, they like getting them as soon as I crank them out. So for five bucks a month, you can have that. So yeah, I would love to have you. Also, if you like the news, I have two news channels now. I have my, my original news channel, AI News Fresh, youtube.com at AI News Fresh. That's where I read the news every morning. 
And based on what you just heard, I've created a new news channel called Daily AI News Podcast that, you know, for people who think my voice is irritating for whatever reason, now you can get it in that podcast format from these two folks that you just heard. So pretty cool stuff. I'm testing it out to see how it works. But so far, the results have been pretty good. My stuff, when I read it, usually goes to about, you know, 30 minutes or an hour. Um, and most of my listeners don't listen to the whole thing. I'm averaging about nine or 10 minutes. These, uh, the podcast stuff really summarizes it, gets it down to about 10 minutes or less and does a really good job. So, uh, you know, one or both are awesome. We'd love to have you at either of those. So consider, uh, hopping onto those channels and away we go. Let's continue working with notebooks because there's still a lot more to talk about. One of the other things we're going to talk about is adding notes. Now, you've already added notes, as fate would have it, um, but we're going to get into what you've done and what you can do. So, notes. Uh, real quick, you can create up to 1,000 notes per notebook, so there's plenty of room. Uh, note, it does not currently support version control or revision history on the notes, so whatever change you make, that's the change. If you accidentally screwed something up, too bad. There's no going back. You can save a useful response uh, to a new note by clicking Save to Notes. We're going to see that. You can save passages from your sources into a note. We'll see that. And you can choose a variety of suggested actions like create an outline when you have one or more existing notes selected. We're going to look at all of that. First, notes directly from the source. Let's take a look at that first. So, uh, when you're looking at any given source... Uh, let's go to a source here and just say you're you're taking a peek at a source. One of the things that you can do is actually create uh, or work with the pieces of the source. Okay, I'm, I'm really a victim here now. Uh, let's see here. It's going to really not play. Okay, give me a second here. Let me see if I can get it. Uh, nope, it is not going to let me do my thing. Okay, no problem. So um, whenever I'm looking at a source, uh, what I can do is create notes from the source. I can highlight some piece of source material. Yeah, this is just not going to work, is it? All right, hang on. Hang on. I can't believe it. Uh, this is what sucks because you've got, I've, got a, I've got to deal with the um, resolution. So give me a second. Okay, sorry about that, folks. I'm not going to be able to do it. It just won't play. So... Um, if you go into, if you've got a bigger resolution than I do, and you go into um, any source and highlight some text, if you select any text, then down where the chat area is, you're going to see these buttons. Suggest related ideas, summarize to note. You can actually summarize it to a note, uh, add it to an existing note, or help me understand. So any, when you're working with sources, and try it now, go to into any source, highlight a piece of text, and you'll see these buttons show up, and you can click on any of them uh, to get the resulting actions. Pretty awesome. Unless you've got a shitty resolution like I do, and then you're kind of screwed. All right, so um, there are two types of notes out there. Um, there is the written notes that you've composed yourself, and the saved responses that you've captured, either through chat interactions or quotes or whatever. All you have currently is your... Um, is your saved responses. You can see here, if you actually look at your notebook, we can go back to our notebooks, go to Liquid AI. And if you actually look at your notebook, I'm gonna collapse it there. You'll notice all of them right now are saved responses. You don't have anything but saved responses because we haven't done anything besides saved responses. But if you wanna add a note, you can. Just click on Add Note, the upper left corner here, and then you can put in whatever you want. You give the note a name. Uh, some cool note. And then you can, down here, you can type some text. Now, normally the window's a whole lot bigger, but again, victim of resolution. Put in whatever text you want. And when you're done, you can click on the little arrows or just click away, and it creates a note. Notice it makes a distinction between saved response notes, which, which were the result of a query or a question you asked, and written notes, which was you going to add note and putting whatever it is you wanted in. Written notes are very useful if you've got little pieces of information and you want to quickly add it in because you think it'll be relevant. Um, that's why we like our written notes. All right. 
So you can work with one or more notes. I'm gonna have the exact same problem I had last time, unfortunately, so I'll talk you through it. So with your notes, you'll notice they have these square check boxes. You can select one or more of them. Oh, no, there it is, it's popping up now. Uh, there you go, all right. So when I select one, notice it says it has help me understand, critique, suggest related ideas, and create outline. So it's actually gonna show it. If I get more than one, then it gives me summarize, suggest related ideas, create study guide, create outline, and combine to note. Yeah, it actually lets me combine multiple notes into a single note. I get asked that a lot for people who have just a ton of notes and they want to combine notes in a particular way. Combine to notes, a uh, pretty cool little feature. So you can do any of these with the notes and it will do them just on the data in the notes, which is pretty powerful stuff. By the way, you do have, next to add note, you do have select all, deselect all, uh, and then delete notes for any notes you want to get rid of. So, for example, this written note's really not helpful. I probably want to get rid of it eventually. Okay, um, so working with, creating and working with notes, we already did that, actually. Pretty cool stuff. You can create, you can modify. Actually, we didn't really work with it to my satisfaction, so let's do this. I'm going to select a couple of notes here like a few of these, and then I'm gonna say uh, combine note, or combine to note, and it's gonna put all of it into a combined note here, called actually combined note, which I can rename. So it takes all of that, puts it into a combined note, and then presumably I did that so I could delete the other two notes and maybe make room for something, or because they were related, right? Maybe if I've been taking a whole bunch of different notes and all of a sudden I realize, hey, these five are related, I can select those five, Combine the note. It's one of my favorite features. All right. Now let's get into asking questions. And this is going to be pretty cool, too. Uh, at this point, we are almost 30 minutes in. Might be a good idea to stop. Let me see where we're at here. Yeah, it's probably going to be a good idea to stop and then finish up with that. Let me see... Yep, yeah, we'll stop here. I think this is a good stopping point. We'll stop here and continue with part three. Uh, that way, we because I've got asking questions and working with answers, it's real important. Uh, and then we'll finish up from there. So uh, we'll pause here, boys and girls. Hopefully you're enjoying the series. This is Zane. I'll see you next time.